I think we'll kind of get started here. Um, but um, as always, these are kind of designed to be pretty informal. Um, but we kind of wanted to um, hear from um, to kind of highlight some cool work that we think is happening and or some work that we think is cool that is happening and um, kind of hear from, uh, you know, sort of the process behind it. So we, um, I, I don't know um, if Noah's going to be able to join us or if he's having difficulties joining or something, but, um, but we do have John Stewart here. Um, John, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm John Stewart. I'm um, at the University of Oklahoma in uh, what we call the Office of Digital Learning. Um, our office primarily works with graduate programs to put together uh, online master's degrees and that kind of thing. But we also run our Domain of One's Own uh, initiative uh, here at OU, and then now the uh, WordPress multi-site, uh, which is, I think, what we'll be talking about mostly today. Um, and I've been running that since, I don't know, like 2016 or something. Um, OU is one of the, the early adopters, and we've been sort of experimenting and playing with things. And this is the, the latest experiment for us. Yeah, so um, we, I kind of wanted to see, you know, you, you just did big changes to the uh, OU Create homepage. So I, I was kind of curious to hear about, you know, how that process started, I guess, even like what were the conversations around, like clearly we have to make some changes here because before this design, you weren't using the stock one. You, you had uh, a custom design on OU Create already. So what wasn't working, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm not even sure. I, need, I should have asked Adam if uh, Adam Kroom or if uh, Tim Owens built the original site, um, but it was the one that we had set up when we first started up the Domains, Domain of One's Own Initiative, and it had been working well for the last few years. But yeah, the, uh, the big impetus was that we wanted to switch to having both Domain of One's Own and this WordPress multi-site as options for users. And so we were trying to think through the messaging on that and just how to um, help folks who've never built a website before understand what those two options are and uh, uh, sort of giving them the, the choice of path without really you know, understanding the destinations that they're going to is a bit difficult. And so we were looking for messaging around that, uh, just a, a clear way to, uh, to convey those two options. And um, Coventry uh, had already done that work a couple of years ago, I think, and I'd seen it a little bit as they were building it, um, but I got you know, uh, some time to dive back into their work and we uh, pretty shamelessly uh, stole from, from their stuff. Uh, they're all um, CCO, and so it was uh, uh, consent, uh, consented stealing. But um, <laughs> we took their language first and then sort of uh, remolded it a little bit for OU and, uh, and then redid the pages a little bit. And I went back and forth with Adam uh, in terms of design. He's got a better eye for design than I do uh, with his journalism background. But, um, but yeah, the, the big initiative was just how do we help people um, who want to build a website, sort of discover our service here at OU, and then how do we help them to uh, understand their two options um, or multiple options? Um, within Domain of One's Own, sort of since we started it, I would say that about 80% of all of our websites are WordPress, uh, somewhere around there. It's a little bit hard to say with uh, handwritten sites, uh, just because those are harder to track, but something like 80% were WordPress. And the main uh, area where students have difficulty is in the initial setup those first couple of hours of just getting a site up and running are the hardest. And so the WordPress multi-site seemed like it would solve a lot of those options, which was, uh, again, a big part of the, the reason we wanted to go there. And so the messaging that we landed on was just, um, if you're blogging for a class, especially if you only intend to keep this blog for a semester, uh, go to the multi-site. Um, and if you want to build something that's outside of WordPress, or if you want to build a portfolio that you're going to keep for four or five years, um, or if you need a high level of customization, uh, go this way. Um, but again, I don't think that a lot of our users coming in really understand the, the difference between the two systems. And so, yeah, how to convey that. Yeah, um, you know, uh, one of the things that kind of stands out to me is, um, you know, right on the homepage of OU Create, you know, you've got, um, of course, like the the expected stuff, like the the login button, but there is... Um, there is a actual, you use the word domain of one's own for the, the obviously domain of one's own service. And then the decision. So I think, I mean, it seems like, and this makes sense to me, the way you described it, you're kind of saying like, right, look, if you don't know what you want, what you probably want is WordPress multi-site um, or, or like we're expecting that. And then you, you have kind of a, 
here's a domain of one's own button and here's a link to what that's about basically. Um, and how did that kind of take shape in like the language on, I, mean, I, I know this is getting extremely specific, but I, I, I'm kind of interested in, in, in how we describe these sort of complicated things to people that need to use it, right? Um, so what was that process like? Sorry, I was looking to see if I could do screen share. Um, yeah, the uh, the so we, again, we were very inspired by um, by what they were doing at Coventry. Um, they had set up uh, about four or five different pages that really go through the different options. And so initially, we um, we took all of those pages and replicated them and then customized them for OU. But in um, once we had that set up, we were looking for just ways to streamline the communication a little bit. And so we ended up consolidating about three of their pages down into our homepage. And so I think this, I think our current homepage looks a lot like what Coventry has in their information for students. And that's um, you know, going to be our, our largest user base for the most part. Um, but we also wanted to you know, talk to uh, instructors and help them understand how they could integrate it into their classes. And so I pulled a little bit from what Coventry had on their teachers page also. So anyway, um, First, borrowing their language, customizing it, and then, and then, like I said, trying to streamline it. We want something where students can get there and get into setting up a site, you know, in five minutes. And um, and so the language needs to be more about why they would want to create a website at all, and less about what the options are, with still having that signposting, um, telling them that there are a couple of options. And so it, it, this was the balance we struck on how to do that. I. I you know, I was tempted to go the opposite way and just do an information overload uh, for them, um, which is, <laughs> I think, always my temptation is just here's everything, here's documentation, here's here's your options, here's 26 different ways to build a website. Um, but what we, you know, ended up settling on was let's try to to get them to click on login as quickly as possible, and um, and get them into the system. And then even at our login screen, it's a it's a forked road. Um, if I can. If I can figure out how to share screen, I can walk you through it a little bit. Um, yeah, the bottom toolbar, the third button from the left, should let you share your screen. Yeah, and I was asking for uh, for permissions, but perhaps it won't actually okay. capture. Uh, perhaps not. Taylor, do you think you could uh, you could share yeah. and talk people through it? Definitely can do that. Cool. Yeah. So here's what we, we settled on. Um, again, I, I uh, my background is more in history um, as compared to design. So I always tend to like a, a black and white layout. I'm not a, a huge fan of, of lots of color in terms of websites. Um, so uh, Jen asks how many students are staring a site or starting a site um, in a typical semester. And uh, so far this semester, I think we've had about 600. Um, we tend to gain about 11 to 1200 users per year and then um, a few graduate every year. And so the net tends to be somewhere around 1,000 per year um, that have built up over time. Um, and so I think since we switched over to the system, it's been about 400 so far this semester. And I anticipate it'll end up being somewhere closer to 600, 650 uh, for the semester. Um, and so they, the students first get here, probably. I'm going to show you a, a separate way that they can enter the system here in a few minutes. Um, but this is our traditional. Uh, sort of URL that we've been using. Um, again, the, the login is the first thing they see. We really want them to just go ahead and click on that. But if they need some convincing as to why they might want to do this, we try to um, talk to them about creating a professional portfolio. Uh, a few different colleges here at OU require a professional portfolio before graduation, an e-portfolio. And, uh, and this is the way that we push uh, when we're working with those colleges and what most of the colleges end up encouraging their students to use. Um, Blog posting is really big for a couple of our classes. We have a, a journalism intro class where students just set up a blog and their assignment every week is to blog. And then we've also got um, some stuff going with um, our international studies where if you're going abroad, uh, they strongly encourage blogging your experiences while you're abroad. So a couple of different sort of standard uses of, um, of blogs and portfolios. The that next section with 63% of the web uses CMS and over 500 plus um, new WordPress uh, sites being built every day is, is straight up stolen from Coventry uh, down to the, the examples they're, um, they're using here with Vogue and Ted and the White House and all. I assume these are, are still accurate. They were when I, when I was putting it all together. Um, but uh, you know, over time, people start off with a somewhat vanilla WordPress and then switch to something else. ESPN used to be WordPress is one of the examples I always point to. Um, 
Yeah, Domains Week or something similar, uh, especially with uh, Open Education Week going on right now. Um, we used to, I, I can talk a little bit about, we have uh, something called Creates, which is our awards every year. Um, and that's been sort of suspended with COVID. But um, so at the end of the year, we, we celebrate our best new websites that people are creating by giving out awards for, uh, for the Creates. And so that's our, our normal celebration where we talk about what you can do online and, and show best examples. So it's a little bit after the fact. I would like a little bit more at the beginning of the semester. Um, we run some workshops at the beginning of the semester, but it's less often that, or less likely that students will hear about that at the beginning than they will hear about the creatives at the end of the semester. Um, it's easier for us to message to faculty and staff at the beginning of a semester or even mid-semester, uh, and easier for us to message to students through those faculty and staff. And so uh, they usually don't hear about us until later on, or at least that's our, our experience so far. Um, yeah, the, the other way that we talk a little bit with open education folks is through our library services. Um, and they've been helping uh, people put together press books and, um, and other sort of open books for a while. We have a, a world geography textbook that runs on the domain of one's own um, WordPress site. And we've got um, a statistics textbook and several others that people put together, a history of science textbook. Um, most of those through WordPress, but occasionally uh, people are playing with Scalar, um, Omeka in one instance, and a few other systems. Um, and so, you know, again, good reason to, to still use domain of one's own. Um, so yeah, the, this is the main site. If you click on login, um, I think I'll be interested to see what it actually shows you. Um, we're, we're SSO integrated. Yeah. So this is what I was hoping you'd see. Um, so eventually you'll hit a wall that you won't be able to get through. Um, but again, wanting to show people those, those two options and really wanting to emphasize that, uh, most users will want just the WordPress, uh, option. But we've got some language in here about you know when you signed up for the service as to which one you're likely to have, and um, and wanting to make sure that people who uh, didn't even know about the new service who you know built their site a couple of years ago can still get to it, and it's still relatively obvious for them as to where they should click. We have had a few people who are trying to sign up um, for the new system who accidentally sign up for the old, and a couple of people who have uh, older websites you know accidentally signing up for the newer system, but um, that's becoming less common just in the first couple of months since we've put this up. And I, I just reach out to those people directly when I see their new signups uh, come in. Um, their confusion is usually relatively obvious just from how they you know, don't set up their site effectively. Um, and sometimes they reach out to us for, for support through our contacts. Yeah, I, I thought this login page in particular was great because I mean, I'm visually it's, it, I think it accomplishes what it needs to do. And I, in execution, it's, Pretty simple because I'm assuming these login buttons are just simply going to the actual login pages for each service. It's not like you had to yeah. modify login for either service, right? This is just yeah, a exactly. page just a in front of it, the, really. Yeah, yeah. And so that that was pretty easy. And the um, the new system is set up under a subdomain, so site.create.oe.edu. Um, and so that login just goes to uh, that login system, and then the SSO is tied in separately to the two. Um, and so whichever one you click on, it's pushing you first into the SSO, but then onto that system. Um, if you do pull up sites.create.ou.edu, you'll see that it has a, a more minimalistic sort of front page. Um, and that was, again, um, I'll, I'll probably change this later, but um, this is just meant to be very fast. This was, I think, uh, using one of the, the standard uh, themes for WordPress in that year. I don't think this was 2021, but it might be. I anyway. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, I think it's the 2020 theme. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, and, uh, and so I just wanted something that loaded really fast and, uh, and was fairly simplistic. And so again, we, we try to explain a little bit of the difference here, but if you've gotten here, if, you've, if, you've, if someone's told you to type in sites.create.ou.edu, it's more probable that this is where you wanna be. And so again, just the login um, for this. And the other thing that I wanted to show people for uh, in this community was that we put together some new design guides uh, which are linked up there at the top uh, of this page. And, um, and I was pretty proud of those in terms of just a different form of um, documentation for users. And so each of these is really, you know, um, operationally oriented, uh, just what is it that the student is trying to do and, uh, and their walkthroughs on, you know, how to pick a theme, how to change your settings, uh, how to organize your site. And so every time I, I get a couple of emails with the same question, I try to go in and write a new guide uh, for the students. And these are either things that I've written or things that I've collected from, uh, from Coventry and from 
Tim Clark and from uh, you know whoever else that have already you know answered some of these questions, but with images from our system or hopefully up to date images from um, the last couple of versions of WordPress. Yeah, I didn't even know about these guys. These are fantastic. Um, and I'm I'm assuming most of the time people aren't. I mean, because this is the this is the top page of the actual multi site, right? So most of the time people are probably not hitting this unless they've been told essentially. Um, to yeah. come here which, so that yeah, and, you know, that simpler design, they, like you said, makes sense. Yeah, and once they've created a site in the multi-site, maybe they're coming here to log in directly, but I think probably sure. most traffic is still going through that uh, create.ou.edu original URL um, and then going through that login screen there. So can I ask you a question, John? Mm -hmm. Is the actual um, WordPress multi-site wide open for anyone in the community and now domain of one's own is on a request basis. Like, so did you rethink how you were going to allocate access to each of these? Yeah, exactly. So it used to be that the originally when you helped us set it up, the, the original domain of one's own was on a request system. And then after we sort of had proof of concept for a year, we opened it up to, um, to just being able to sign up. Anybody who could get through the SSO could sign up. Um, now, if you try to go through that login for the domain of one's own, if you already have an account, it just forwarded to you right through. But if you don't have an account, then the um, it brings you to a gravity form. And the gravity form really only asks, um, what is it that you want to do that you don't think you could do in WordPress multi-site? And then there's a link there to push you onto multi-site if you'd be happy with that. And so again, I, on that form, I try to explain a little bit of, of the you know possible things you could want to do that aren't possible in multi-site. And I try to sort of encourage people to think about, you know, do I need an Omeka site? Do I need a really customized WordPress site? Do I need, I don't know, do I just want to write straight HTML? Uh, and if they if they can tell me that they want to do that, then then they want to do that. But if they can't put that into words, then maybe they don't actually need it. Um, so we're still getting signups for domain of one's own, but yeah, they're, they're significantly reduced. Um, you know, like I said, going from 1,200 uh, a year to, uh, I think we'll have 50 to 100 over the course of the year. Yeah, and I think it's interesting too because it also like understands and meets the needs for a vast amount of the community and then like focuses both of the tools. And one of the things I think I was really excited about hearing you talk about this was the idea of tiering some of these systems. A lot of the discussions around digital presence and that happens across many schools and the way in which like you've abstracted out a lot of that discussion and those kind of ideas and then here's the, va the various tools you might need to get at that, right? And I think that's one of the things I really like about what folks like you and Coventry have been doing is abstracting out the project and then pointing them to whether it's WordPress multi-site, domain of one's own, or even something else that might be more particular um, is super cool. And it kind of reinforces almost a series of toolboxes at the disposal of the university. So uh, I really like the way you've done it. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I still get a lot of the people who want to do something that's really customized still reach out to me directly or or through the um, the our email create at oe.edu. But usually at this point they're reaching out to me directly and they're saying I don't really know what it is, but I want to build a website for this group that does this thing and it's it, it, you know custom and, and sort of unique. And then I walk them through the options and you know tell them maybe this is best in a, a Drupal site or whatever. Um, and so then I, I help push them. I go ahead and even set up their account in domains and, and help them get started with that, often you know, installing the app for them and sort of walking them through it. Um, but there are people that you know, get in there and, and just want to do it on their own. And, um, and usually I can you know, see that request form as soon as they submit it and go ahead and clear them for it. Or you know, I, I've reached out to a number of students who've signed up for both accounts at the same time. And I just ask them, hey, what is it you're trying to do? And, and which one of these you know, do you want? Um, I haven't had any yet that said they wanted both. I have actually had a few people who already had a domain of one's own and wanted to set up a site just to test it out, but I haven't had anybody going the opposite way. Um, so um, Kristen asked uh, how long folks can keep multi-sites. So with the original domain of one's own, we turned them off six months after graduation, which is when um, folks at OU lose their uh, single sign-on uh, account. And so since they couldn't use the SSO account anymore, they actually can't get into create anyway. And so we would send them an email saying, you know, here's how to transition over to reclaim or multiple other options. Um, but we sort of defaulted into, here's how you might want to move your domain over to reclaim. Um, with the um, multi-site right now, I'm planning on letting them keep it for quite a while longer. There are 
uh, a few different use cases that we've already set up where they keep it indefinitely um, and then just let me know when you want to delete it. And then um, other use cases where I think we'll end up going with something like a year or two after they graduate, I'll reach out to them and see if they want to keep it or, or delete it or transfer it somewhere else. I'm assuming that the same problem with single sign-on would hit the multi-site though. Like you, they can keep the site, but after they can't log in single sign-on, they won't be able to edit the site or is that, or do you have ways around that? Yeah, I think they can, I need to check and make sure that this is actually enabled, but they should be able to log directly into their site um, through, uh, not through the SSO, but through WordPress login. Oh, okay. Um, cool. Basically backdoor it. Um, that would be the, the easiest workaround. Um, sure. And technically I already know how to do that. I'm just not sure if we've enabled it. Um, but yeah, it's a good question. I need to double check that that's, that's turned on. Um, we had uh, Jen ask about sort of what support system are you working with, <laughs> you know, for helping people with multi-site? Is it you? Is it a team? IT help? How does that work? Yeah, so so our office, Office of Digital Learning, is responsible for for all of this stuff. So IT, you know, handles most uh, IT projects. But um, actually, Jim might know the answer better uh, to this than than I do as to why our office got it. It's it's because of Adam Kroom, uh, who originally set all of this up. Um, so anyway, our office is responsible for both domains and WordPress multi-site. And so if someone submits a, a ticket, uh, it goes through our email system. So create at ou.edu, and um, I use a ticketing system called Freshdesk. And so it comes in through there, and um, and I see all of those and, and just try to resolve them. So theoretically, it's a team of me and Adam and uh, one of our other ed techs. But in reality, I can handle them all pretty easily on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we do escalate a few things up to, to Jim and the rest of the folks at Reclaim. Uh, but those tend to be pretty obscure um, domain of one's own issues. We haven't, I think, escalated anything off the WordPress multi-site yet. Um, so, and then, like I said, if I get a question often enough on the multi-site, I write a guide and then the the standard response just comes uh, to, uh, you know, here's how to do it. And here's this guide for more information. Awesome. Um, we had a question from Kristen about, um, I, I think probably about the contact info. I did the question was from a couple minutes ago for, yeah, um, I'm assuming you're still just, well, you can answer, <laughs> but about uh, retiring accounts, I think is what. Yeah, and that's the big challenge is um, if we don't contact them soon enough, their OU emails get turned off. And so that's why it, we have to contact them after about six months uh, or within the first six months is because otherwise their OU emails will get turned off and then it's hard to find them. Uh, we do get some secondary uh, you know, Gmail accounts and those kinds of things. But um, typically if their OU email bounces, then I, I have to, uh, sometimes I'll even put like a temporary um, sign up on their site. I'll put like a, you know, site maintenance contact OU uh, kind of thing and hope that they reach out to me noticing that their site isn't working properly. Um, but yeah, that's that's been a big challenge and we don't have a great answer for it yet. Um, I'm not sure there is a great answer other than you know doing better at collecting secondary emails. I know one thing you can do at least in domain of one's own is you can suspend the account that terminate it yeah. and then you know they would they'll get a message that says this account's been suspended and you can wait for them to see that or not. I'm not I don't but I'm not I'm not sure the best way to do that in WordPress, a really automated way and multi-site. WordPress multi-site has a really nice feature that's underutilized called archive, where you can archive sites, we'll take them all offline, but we'll keep them. And then they can just basically be uh, exported out should you want to. And I, I think underdeveloped on their side, but with UMW blogs early on, we did some of that archiving work. We kept everything there, but people had requested we take it offline. Um, and then there's relationships maybe with library to archive it long term or just to make sure like Kristen is kind of pushing towards. We always wanted to say, can you get your stuff out cleanly? And with WordPress multi-site, you know, with a XML export and import it to WordPress.com or your own space, it is pretty seamless. Um, you miss some of the database exports because WordPress multi-site database exports and all the settings like theme settings, plugin settings. Some of that does get lost in the translation, um, but that's, you know, it's always a balance given, like your point to with support, John, scaling a WordPress multi-site to thousands of users is actually manageable for one person, which I think is amazing. Yeah, we've got, uh, I, I think we still have about 60, 400 users in the domain of one's own. And then we're, uh, I think probably at seven or 800 right now in multi-site, but rapidly approaching a thousand. 
And I think over the next couple of years, that'll shift to maybe 3,000 long-term in Domain of One Zone and more like seven in WordPress multi-site. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, if we get up to about 10,000 users over the next couple of years, um, that I'll, I'll still probably be able to manage all of that uh, on my own or occasionally asking for help from, you know, Keegan or Adam. Um, sorry, I was looking through a couple of different questions. Um, someone asked, uh, I've lost it now, but someone was asking about plugins um, and, and themes. The themes question is a little bit harder um, because uh, basically I, I went with a lot of the themes that I like. And then I've been trying to look at themes that are, um, you know, have all the check marks and, and have been tested for responsiveness and accessibility. And so I, I go with those first, but then also um, I'm trying to keep them simple. So I haven't put something like Astra or, um, you know, any of the Elementor stuff in there. It's all sort of more vanilla uh, themes. And so Anders Noren's themes are always the one that, that I point to first uh, because they're so clean and, and well developed. And Anders, I think, is one of the lead theme developers now for WordPress. I think he was responsible for um, 2020 and 2021, probably 2022. Um, but anyway, so I've got several of his themes in there. I've, I think I've got about uh, a dozen, maybe 15 different themes for folks to choose from. And then I encourage folks to, whenever I'm talking to them, to let me know if they want something else and I'll, I'll test it out and see how it works. As for plugins, the first one that I came across, and I was trying to share screen again, but I'm, again, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble with it. Um, th there's a dashboard theme that I, I wanted to show. And it customizes the dashboard. And I found this just by looking at Coventry's like docs. And then I sort of reverse engineered what they were using. And it's this really interesting sort of dashboard customizer where um, the first thing that people see once they log in is this, this custom dashboard. And so I put a video tutorial up there as to on that custom dashboard as to how to set up your first site. And then I've also got links from it to um, the guides and to the create documentation uh, more broadly. Um, and then uh, and then a list of their uh, sites, and they can set up as many WordPress multi-sites as they want. And so that custom dashboard, I think, does a lot of the work in terms of directing traffic once someone gets logged in. And um, uh, I was really happy once I found that that plugin. So that was the, the big one that I started with. Um, I can I'll load up in my own screen, at least, and see what other plugins I'm, I'm running, jog my memory as to what was really useful. I was also curious to know um, about um, the tools you actually used on the design of create .o, that that home page, like is that oh, Elementor yeah. or something else? Um, yeah, that's actually Elementor. So I, I I've been using Elementor a lot on uh, my own projects that I design, and so um, it, you know it's sort of a sledgehammer, um, but I, I keep hitting everything with it, um, and uh, I I really like it. It was a big learning curve for me, but now that I'm comfortable in it, I feel like I can put together. A site that looks decent um, pretty quickly with it, and so I've got a Elementor Pro account uh, just under my own name, and I use it on whatever projects that I'm um, that I want to. Sorry, scrolling back through, there's there's so many comments. Yeah, yeah, they're really, they're um, flying in. We've got uh, Tim Clark wants to know about if you can find a link for the dashboard documents that you created. Yeah, let me uh, flip over to my plugins. Too. And uh, Heather, um, you say more about the learning curve. Do you mean the learning curve of Elementor or? Yes. Um, yeah, for me, the learning curve on Elementor was, um, uh, it just took a while. Um, and so uh, it, I think it's a really powerful app in terms of, of being able to customize you know, pages and the way they have templates set up now. Um, and also, I think Elementor is a sort of a bridge for some of us to learn this new WordPress 2022 system, uh, the new 5.9 WordPress that they've they've come out with in terms of thinking about templates for everything. Um, but there's there's great tutorials, sort of, you know, especially on YouTube for Elementor. Um, but Elementor Pro is is extremely powerful in terms of the way that it handles templates, and um, and still sort of my preferred system. I know. Uh, uh, WP Bakery used to be used a lot, and I was trying to remember what. Um, uh, yeah, what some of the other stuff. Yeah. Beaver Builder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Beaver Builder was one of the other ones. But yeah, I, I like Divi. Um, I didn't like Beaver Builder as much. I find Sorry. Elementor of the page builders, while it is a lot, probably the most approachable. Like Divi is really powerful, but I don't know that I would describe it as approachable. Um, in my my experience with it um and i, I see uh kristen mentioned that they're trying to move towards the you know new page builder stuff in wordpress and 
that's I think going to be really powerful, but there's very few themes that support it right now. Um, but you also need less themes, probably, in, in that system. I will say that um, I, Mo just mentioned using Elementor with the Hello theme. And I, I use the Hello theme, I think, on this one. And I use it in most places. The one thing that was interesting was um, just the way that, uh, that we had originally set up the Domain of One's own site. The, um, the header was like a separate piece of PHP that was like customized onto our original theme. The footer was as well. The SSO pass through was as well. And so there was a lot of um, uh, false starts in terms of customizing everything just to keep what Timmy had already set up for us working and not quite knowing how to reverse engineer it. And so I was, I was constantly playing with like, what can I do in Elementor without breaking everything that Tim already has done for us? Um, and I got it to work eventually, but um, for a while, like I couldn't get the site to be responsive, like at all. It was just like grossly non-responsive, uh, and that took me literally a couple of weeks to figure out like where exactly is this breaking, and it was because the header was was stretching the whole page. Um, you all were the first ones to like leave the enfold compound, and we were yeah. like, "Come back! <laughs> Don't you yeah. go? It's gonna break things." But yeah. your site ended up looking awesome. And, uh, yeah, I think I think there are a couple of things that if you actually look at the page code, there are a few things that are just not being displayed. And so a couple of you know pretty cheap workarounds in terms of uh, they're still there. They're just they're just not being displayed. But um, but yeah, it, it, after a lot of trial and error, it, it worked out. I really like. I mean, one of the things, and it's too bad Noah's not here. But one of the things I really liked about but what liked about what both you and Noah or Coventry in Oklahoma did. And I know there's a lot of schools out there, even in this chat, who have WordPress and WordPress multi-site or have domain of one's own and WordPress multi-site and are imagining how they can set up that kind of fork. Like, you want to build something? Okay. And then it's at that point where you make that decision very quickly. Like, you're designed to say, here's a quick sentence. And then I jump in and then fork to full-on domain of one's own or WordPress multi-site. Like... I love the way you all both said it, and it's that abstraction out. Can you talk a little bit about the thinking there, just for other folks who maybe have these two separate systems, and how when you all went about it, thought of it as one larger offering with two tiers, maybe? Yeah, I still I didn't want to get away from domains, and that that's still I, I still value basically everything that we've discussed for the last seven or eight years now, um, in terms of wanting something for students to be able to learn with, like learn how the internet works. Um, Keegan's workshop that he set up a couple of years ago on like just how the internet works is fantastic. And I still want to run as many people as I can through that. And we talk about Apache and we talk about, um, you know, what are URLs and what are domain servers and, and all of the rest of it, DNS servers. Um, but at the same time, like the journalism intro freshman students don't care and they, they just do not care. They don't want to go breaking websites. They just want something that works immediately and to turn in their blog posts. And so the balance between those two, um, you know, still wanting to provide the opportunities for people to build whatever they want, break whatever they want. Um, you know, several of us still have 40 or 50 websites running in a domain. Um, I, I still wanted that. And especially for these like custom projects, I, we have a lot of stuff running with our library. We have a lot of stuff running with uh, School of Architecture, uh, you know, with other groups that are these big, you know, multi-platform websites, very customized, you know, some in HTML, some in, in WordPress or whatever else. And so, yeah, the, the idea never really seemed like it would work to just turn off domains. It, it was always going to be a, a, you know, both uh, type idea. Um, I, I, I still think that there's something that we could do, and maybe it's in the signup, uh, where we offer a more ephemeral uh, product, like WordPress multi-site, but just for a semester where it's planned to just be auto-deleted after six months or whatever. Um, I don't know quite how to tie it to the end of our academic schedule, but I'd really like something like that where students can like just tell us, I just want this for one class. I love and, that idea. Uh, and just have it auto-delete. And it, for a while, I can't find it anymore, but there was this blogging service for a little while that was like a, a blog where if you didn't log in after like a week, it would delete itself. And I really like that concept of just, I want to blog while I'm blogging and then, you know, I want it to delete itself and, and not be on the internet anymore. Um, and, you know, it, with digital detox and with all of the, again, you know, just a lot of the discussions that this community has had over the years, I think there's a call for that. I still, you know, obviously there's a call for Omeka sites that are 
you know, semi-archival and need to be up for a while. Um, just everything in between. Yeah, that's brilliant. Actually, we have Noah Mitchell from Coventry has joined us. Um, so that would be awesome. Um, on top of already the great discussion that happened around uh, OU with their um, packaging. No, we'd love and we've been referencing you. Your ears would probably be ringing in England. We've been talking extensively about the work at Coventry. So we'd love to hear a little bit about your thinking. You had started as a domain of one's own school and um, part of the push there was to also introduce this WordPress multi-site component and then integrate them the way you did. Can you talk a little bit about that process? Uh, yes, I can. Can you hear me okay, Jim? Yeah, can now that's absolutely good. Excellent. I'm sorry, everybody. Massively, massively late. I haven't got a good excuse, but I want to tell it to you anyway. We were running a games design session, so we do a lot of game based learning, and we were just playing a new board game somebody's working on to talk about digital fluency. And my alarm didn't go off, uh, and we were just really into it. So it's a terrible excuse, but I'm a little bit proud of it anyway. So I am sorry about that, but I'm going to try to catch you up on um, what we. <laughs> <laughs> what we've been doing with domains. So sorry, sorry, Taylor. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for organizing. Um, yeah, with Coventry Domains, we were already running domains of one's own for, for quite a few years um, with very major reclaim hosting and having a lot of good success with um, some of the staff and students that were using that. Uh, we did find that not everybody needed the full shebang. You know, oh, there it is on the screen. Nice. I was about to share it. Uh, so what happened was uh, lots of students would sign up. They really just needed a very basic WordPress site and they were having to kind of helpfully learn how to navigate C and a WordPress and then do all these things. And and that was great, but then they were also not keeping things up to date. And uh, we wanted for uh, GDPR then to use cookies and, um, sorry, cookie consent and privacy policies to get up to date. We wanted to offer them a managed service, basically. So the desire was to have something that was a little bit more scalable and that was self-service that students can come in. So we have this desire to use WordPress multi-site. So the talks at Coventry, and we had lots of back and forth about this, were what, what do we do now? <laughs> do we keep using domains of one's own? Do we just need WordPress? And we pretty quickly decided, yes, we do need them both. And uh, Coventry domains uh, was gonna split into two kind of sub-services. So we were gonna always retain the domains of one's own service and brand it to domains of one's own. Previously, Coventry domains and domains of one's own were the same thing. Um, but we decided, let's make Coventry domains be the umbrella. And we're going to start this domains of one's own service and then separately have uh, what we call Coventry domains WordPress. And internally, we, we call it do and multi-site. And so we had a challenge of communicating how these are different offerings to the students and, and what do we do. So my initial stab at designing this, this is the homepage we're seeing now, uh, was to maybe do like a kind of 50 side by side or uh, almost like on a, a most SaaS website, you get like a pricing grid and make them seem really equal <laughs> um, uh, just to show what these two services are. Uh, and then ultimately we thought, um, most people in our in our institution are going to need multi-site. So we decided that multi-site is the default, and most people, the natural user flow is to come to Coventry Domains, see that WordPress is there, web publishing is a thing. We just generally talk about web publishing rather than talk about cPanel. Um, and yeah, feel free to scroll on through the site, and we're just sharing some facts about, you know, I uh, went dug up some statistics of <laughs> why WordPress is a useful thing to know, why getting online is a good thing to know, getting quotes from people who have used domains of one's own in the past and just generally applied that to web publishing, and really, really selling the idea of, of just getting online and web publishing, those things that would apply to both services. Um, so we don't just talk about uh, WordPress or the, the features of the service that much. I wanted to focus on the benefits and, and who else was using it and the benefits that apply to both systems. Uh, so when you get through that and when the students click on log in or sign up or when they click on uh, for students as one of the tabs at the top, um, the, natural, um, the natural flow is for them to then sign up for the multi-site service. Um, so separately to that, um, and then there you go. So when they say get your free account, most people click on that and come through that way. That just goes to um, our multi-site, which is the wp.coventry.domains. Um, so yeah, that just is where most people end up landing. Um, so then we wait. <laughs> we wait for people to tell us that this isn't enough. 
that they, they need to have a little bit more. So we wait for those graphic design courses to tell us that we want their students to be able to customize it to pick this theme or that theme, rather than just the um, 12 or 14 themes that we maintain, most of them being Anders Norin themes, because he's awesome. And uh, <laughs> uh, we, we maintain everything for them in terms of uh, maintaining the plugins and keep the themes up to date. And we put a, a footer notice that um, is talking about this is, you know, part of Coventry Domains, uh, part of Coventry University, all that stuff. So, yeah, we basically we just wait for people to tell us that they need a little bit more. And we said, you know, have you met Domains of One's Own? And that way they, they get to find out just that little bit more. Uh, we knew that this would cause a little bit of uh, maybe confusion of uh, what is the second offering and, and who's it for and who could have access because we're still gatekeepers of domains of one's own and people still need to get us to give them permission and to grant them access. Um, so yeah, they can come and do that. But by default, there's a single sign on self-service sign up option for Coventry domains and, and most people are using it and it scaled really well. And this uh, last semester, I think, for the first time, our multi-site users has exceeded our domains of one's own users, um, and that we expect will just continue to grow as it becomes the sort of default portfolio option for students at Coventry University. Um, some page that I did put in eventually, it was this was going to be front and center originally, and then we decided, uh, no, we just want people to do multi-site by default. Uh, if you scroll down to the the very bottom and look in the footer, uh, there's a comparison page. And I had to make it for everybody who was wondering what is the difference. Um, so if you do the uh, WordPress versus domains of one's own, then you do get the the side by side comparison. So that helps you make that choice. So if somehow domains of one's own, or you know that's a thing, maybe somebody was using it in the course previously and they want to know what the new service is, um, just this page has been super helpful, um, just having that comparison thing uh, for people to go and see. So if you're going to have both services side by side, you'd have to think of your approach. You know, do you put this on your homepage and make it really obvious that there are two services? For us, we just wanted most people to think this is what Coventry Domains is, it's the multi-site, um, and for them to find out actually, you know, there is something a little bit deeper if, if that's what you need. Um, so yeah, that was our design choice. This is the website, and it's it's working for us so far. <laughs> I I don't think I've seen this WordPress versus domain of one's own graphic side by side, but I love this. This is awesome. Yeah, definitely. That's helpful in a lot of the uh, in the support inbox queries or uh, when somebody's saying, why can't I install this theme? Or um, or they say they want a website, but they don't really know what they want to do. And I'm, and I'm trying to help them. Do you need something simple or complicated? Have a look at this page. So um, can, I, can I ask you a question, Noah? Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that I was asking John, and I'll ask you too, and I mean, Coventry really kind of opened this up, this way of rethinking domain of one's own in a way in that like it's still in your mindset Coventry domain so the the larger vision stays but the the way in which you imagine both services under one umbrella rather than saying well WordPress multi-site is something else go over there this is just domains what was the thinking to keep everything of a piece because I really think while subtle and logical in retrospect I mean, we've been working with domains for years. We started with WordPress multi-site, but we never had that elegance of integration that Coventry really nailed with Coventry domain. So I'd love to hear, like, what was the thinking? How did you kind of say, like, this is how we're going to do it? Uh, it's arguing, mainly. Uh, <laughs> you met Jonathan in our team, our director, and uh, he was adamant that we would keep Coventry domains the brand. Um, Daniel and I, you also know Daniel, we were more of the opinion that we need a new brand and Coventry Domains is still going to be domains of one's own. That will be the sub thing. And then multi-site is going to be called something else and we're going to come up with a new brand. Um, so there's lots of internal back and forth um, and just discussions and eventually the boss won. Uh, surprise, surprise. Uh, so <laughs> but the intention was always to think, what is it that unites and brings together what domains is, which is this self-service going deep it's a playground you can build anything you can maintain it yourself you can develop some real skills there and this just multi-site wordpress only where it's just getting that basic blog up and starting to publish and being a producer and doing it really quickly what brings those things together and really it's just about being a, a creator and a digital citizen and so the idea is to to go to the students with that umbrella which is called coventry domains now uh, and just say yeah these are the benefits you're going to be putting stuff out there online. You know, you're going to be <laughs> showing people what you've got. You're going to be a digital citizen. Uh, you're going to maybe get some WordPress skills. 
um, if you want to use WordPress. Uh, so yeah, it was um, yeah there was there's always going to be that umbrella unifying concept of what brings it together, and for us that's web publishing. So Coventry Domains uh, fits into our our wider edtech ecosystem uh, within our portfolio suite of portfolio tools as our core portfolio building tool. Uh, some people in HLS or Health and Life Sciences use something called um, Pebble Pad a little bit more. Uh, some people used to use Mahara a little bit more in the day. Um, but yeah, with uh, the introduction of multi-site, um, Coventry Domains has become the, the default go-to portfolio building service for both staff and uh, educators in the university. And, and people always continue to come with us with the use cases that they've had before, like a group of researchers wants to come and make a website for a project or you know, so it's not just students making graphic design portfolios. It's all, it's all kinds of stuff. It, it's also interesting, and this came up with John, and I know um, Kristen brought it up in the chat. How are you communicating to people how they take their stuff with them when they go? Like, is there a very explicit, like, you're doing it as part of school, but we're kind of getting you ready also, like, because you talk about building a career site, a portfolio. Is there a clear, like, exit strategy? I uh, wish it was clearer. Uh, so we've got a challenge now that now it's self-service, the country domains multi-site thing. There's a bit of a danger that um, people don't, we can't control things as much because with domains of one's own, uh, staff have to come to us and they fill out a form to say, I want this module to have access. And when the students sign up for it, we can send them a welcome email that gives them a link to our knowledge base that tells them about uh, exporting their content when they're done and when they leave Coventry University and what that's like. Um, so for we've got two different knowledge bases and one's for really aimed at Coventry Domains uh, do and one's aimed at uh, Coventry Domains WordPress because there's slightly different answers to those questions. Um, both of them have information on how to export your things and take it with you. Obviously you have a few more options when you have cPanel access. Um, so when somebody comes or a staff member comes for access for their course for their students to use domains of one's own, we're very clear that you should be upfront with your students that this is just access while they're studying. Um, you can take their content with them, but it won't last forever because some people think it does last forever. They get in touch three years after they graduated and say, well, can I log into my site anymore? Um, <laughs> uh, so we've got this new challenge of people coming in through the um, Coventry Domains multi-site, and if they've accessed it themselves with single sign-on, they may not know that they won't have access when they leave. Um, but we're working on that. We're trying to work with IT, or we call it digital services, a little bit more, who are making students aware that the things they create as students, they can have options to export it, but they're not going to have range to the full suite of tools when they leave university. Some of those things stop like the day they leave. Some of those things persist for a little while. So Coventry Domains, they'll still be able to access it, I think, as long as they have an active um, email address, so it might be a little bit different. Um, so there's some communication that needs to happen on the self-service angle. Um, but yeah, certainly if they do look at the documentation, that's always there. Um, I think we just need to do a little bit more to onboard people who come to the multi-site thing on their own. So. Well, I've got you on the call, Jim. That's actually a good point. Can I email people <laughs> like an automated email as soon as they sign up for a Coventry Domains multi-site? Because that would be a good thing to include. I can't imagine why not. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, in terms of WordPress multi-site, the ability to reach out with a very custom email about what it is and like we did with Domain of One's Own, absolutely. Yeah. I think someone good. talked about MailChimp. Was that you, John, in the comments talking about how you're doing that? Yeah. I'll let you talk. I'll shut up. Yeah, that's more for sort of um, end of semester, end of year, or uh, you know, big update type stuff. But we just drop our our mail lists on a, a Mailchimp, and uh, and I have a couple of different campaigns that I send out, you know, recurring. Um, we still have emails that y'all generate for us for the domain of one's own users. But yeah, and I'm not sure that we auto generate anything for the multi-site users. So that would be nice, just figuring that out. I imagine I'm sure there's a plugin that'll do it. But yeah, if uh, if anybody figures that out. Actually, you know that. what? One of the things that's interesting about WordPress multi-site, and uh, again, in network admin, you can customize what that first post is. And in that first post, it could be like, welcome to Coventry, you know, WordPress or Coventry sites, or welcome to, you know, oh, you create sites. Here's all you need to know. Here's what you need to know about exporting. Here's what you need to know about getting support. And so rather than having hello world, it could be a very kind of useful, like Ghost does when you ever set up a Ghost instance or some other sites, like their first original stock posts 
are actually documentation, right? And that's a kind of, I, they'll read that, you know, and I think that could be elegant. People might feel differently um, here on this call in terms of design, but that's one way at it. There's, there's plugins that let you customize WordPress's notifications too. And I'm trying to remember the one I've used in the past, but there's one that was literally like, no, replace the default. You just signed up email with this instead. And I, I, it's been a while, but I've used one of those on a multi-site before. So I know it's possible with plugins. Um, I just can't remember which one I use off the top of my head. Yeah, uh, that would be good. That could be a good way to start it. But I think um, something where we're maybe nurturing them a little bit, like when you sign up for WordPress.com, you know, you're going to get those drip fed emails that are going to tell you about the features um, as you're getting used to it. So that kind of thing would be cool. Uh, for us to set up to I see Edbex put a comment there that they've got 20 emails that go out automatically from a trigger. So if the trigger is, you know, user signs up, they get this content. Or like Jim's saying, you know, the first page is going to be an intro and a link to the support base. I think that would be good for us to do. So yeah, we're definitely not done with it. That would be a great thing for, for me to go and iterate next. So find this down. Yeah, I know there is a MailChimp plugin. I haven't tried it uh, in terms of, of setting this up, but yeah, in terms of like uh, triggering a drip campaign, that'd be interesting. And Ed says that they've got some emails that are auto triggered, presumably maybe off of a PHP hook or something. And I'll just say here, because I can't go a community chat without talking about Coventry Learn. The whole idea of reframing Coventry domains around that sense of web publishing and literacy and having that support documentation, because we've heard from our community in these chats that that's one of the things that, you know, we need to work on is that community support documentation. And I think that goes hand in hand with this idea of the literacy and the kind of project of what these are doing. Um, and so thinking through that um, has been really useful. So in that way, Coventry Domains on a lot of fronts was doing a lot of different pieces to bring that idea of it not just about a domain of one's own, but about publishing to the web, a certain amount of literacy and understanding what this whole new framework and ecosystem, like you said, is about. So I really do appreciate all the different pieces that came out to make for that shift, which seems subtle, but really for me is gigantic. Cool. Um, I uh, Ed, Ed uh, suggested the plugin, and that's the one I've used. <laughs> Better notifications for WordPress. Um, if that's helpful for anyone, I have it linked. Um, and uh, Noah linked to their uh, support documentation for multi-site as well, which is um, which also looks pretty great um, as a complement to the domain of one's own side of it. I wonder if like there wouldn't be a, a space for like a plugin and WordPress plugin and theme Jeopardy, where like you're like <laughs> these plugin like list topics and it's like this is the plugin that does you know you give description and then someone has to name the plugin and then you win or lose like uh, maybe a very particular group of people would be interested in that but consider me one of them. That sounds amazing. Um, but yeah, definitely a very particular group of people. <laughs> like, I don't know that that's going to get picked up beyond the pilot, uh, that show. But um, one one thing I find really interesting in hearing from uh, John and Noah, the, the two of you, the way that you both have the same problem of like, okay, we obviously need to describe to our users, you know, what these things are. And you're handling it pretty similarly um, but you know, where my understanding, John, is that at OU, like you're you're saying, like this is probably what you want, and then you know they have a form, right, where you can they can request a domain of one's own account if they want it, and you're kind of helping them figure out, like, okay, no, you can actually do that on multi-site, so you should continue there. And uh, at Coventry, it sounds like you're kind of handling that after the fact of like go in here, play here first, and if you you know if you specifically reach out. It's it's a similar model. Um, how have the how have the two of you managed people who decide to switch after? Like, has that happened a lot or not really? Like the because it's it's hard to move between the two systems. There isn't like a hey, we hit a button and now your site's over here, 
or is that just not come up super often? So I'll go, I'll go, I'll take this one first. Uh, we've, yeah, because we have that flow where the default is multi-site and when you're ready for something else to move over, um, I just tell them to follow the docs on exporting your site. Like if you set up with for claim hosting or your own host and, um, uh, yeah, so they, they mainly just do the XML export and then have to set up the theme on the new site. And that's, and that's fine for, for most people. Uh, they're happy with that and then they just start building what they like. Um, if they want to use the same theme, I, I tell them where to find the theme. Um, so no, that's that's okay, and it's there's not been that many people that move over. Um, it does happen some. Uh, we also, I just wanted to point out that while there's not a lot of individual students coming up to say that they want domains access, because generally it's done uh, module by module. That's historically how we got started. This was a um, something that was learned used as part of assessment. So you know the uh, the module leader would sign up for it. And so we sometimes have a, a quick conversation. I ask people, am I allowed to give this person access? The, the module doesn't have access. I usually do without asking anyway. Um, so <laughs> it's not as formal, because I like people to be able to use the mains of one's own. But yeah, officially, uh, it's something that your uh, your module leader, your lecturer will, will request, and then everybody in the module gets access. But yeah, not, there's not been loads of people that move um, yeah, from, from one to the other. Uh, that sort of thing. There's been a couple that have, um, this is mainly staff who have started with uh, domains of one's own and they just, uh, their their plugins kind of break or they just have trouble installing a theme in the first place and they maybe done a few posts and stuff and I, I tell them it, it's very easy to move to this other service called multi-site and there's been a few people that have gone that way. Uh, but yeah, it's it's mainly just the, the XML export that we use. Yeah, same, same for us is the XML export and then, yeah, recustomizing the theme uh, installation. The one example I really liked uh, in terms of moving from one system to the other was just one of our uh, English professors who's uh, been more experimental and playful with with uh, WordPress and with the web generally. Um, just wanted to see if he could replicate what he'd done in Domain of One's Own in the WordPress multi-site. And, um, and so he redeveloped his own sites there. I also had his students for the his current semester set up sites in the multi-site system. And then the other thing that he was wanting to play with was um, the uh, uh, shoot RSS aggregators that we all used to use, and um, and so he's still having he's having his students sign up in the multi sites, and then he's aggregating those through his domain in one's own uh, <laughs> account just so we don't have that plugin. Oh, that's um, so. awesome. Well, yeah, it's still like uh, that blog, blog hub system. So yeah, well, it's funny because like I know Ed Beck, he was paid by. Commons in a box to be in today. I just want you all to know that. But more seriously, like the idea <laughs> is is you base and I love Commons in a box, so I'm joking with you. Ed. But the idea in a WordPress multi-site that gets overlooked sometimes is that all of those pages and, and posts can have a common tag across the entire instance. So you can aggregate if a student in totally different sites use the same tag, it can all aggregate into a course site. And that was the beginning of a domain of one's own in WordPress multi-site was everybody write it in their own portfolio, but aggregate through tags. So you saying that, John, with the whole like edgy glue, which I've been dreaming about on my blog recently, like that's the kind of emergence of it. And to come back to it alongside domain of one's own is so super awesome. So I'll let Ed shoot me down here. Big fan, Ed. I'm joking. You know that, right, Ed? I'm a big fan. We should do a Commons in a Box community. Yeah, chat. that's definitely got to be a future community chat. I mean, it, it, I hear so much of what people are asking for. And what Commons in a Box Open Lab does for me is I have a community site already built in that includes every site in my entire um, network. Those sites are sorted between portfolios, classes, projects, and organizations. I have notifications set up because it already has it. You know, when I install the Commons in a Box plugin, it installs that better notifications for WordPress. Plus, they've written sensible defaults already so that I don't have to use my brain space on it. So I already have like 20 notifications already set up. Welcome to the site. You know, oh, you just got promoted. Oh, you just joined a group. Oh, there was just a blog post on a group that you're a member with. Um, I do, just like everybody else, I do mix and match um, domains of one own and the WordPress multi-site. I can connect back to my 
um, comes in a box open lab through RSS. And so it still appears in my community site, even though it's external. And I get all the other features of Commons in a Box, but not the user management. If a faculty member makes a group site, they can invite their students because they have built that feature in. If a student wants needs to do a, a portfolio for a class, but is only doing it for the class, but doesn't really want this thing to be world public, we can set it so that it's private, you know, so we can comply with FERPA. I mean, they've... You know, I have such great admiration for what CUNY has done because it's like it's checking all my boxes as I go down. To that point, I mean, and again, we'll put a pin in this because we should return it and bring in the the, the comments in a box, folks. But like to their great credit, like they release their own instances regularly. Boom Gorgeous actually like packages it all up and it's done and there's bugs. Like it is a well-oiled machine that's been done for now years and they have a one-click installer like they have done a lot the one thing with commons of the box that can be is running it in a, a shared hosting environment it often does a lot of work so at that point it might have to be on a vps or something like that so but it is a super powerful tool you're right but yeah and i've got i'm you know i've i've always had it in our domain of one zone, it's just taking up one user in my domain of one zone, knowing that someday when this gets you know huge, I'm going to have to move it to Reclaim Cloud. You're giving me agita to saying that, just so you know. Yeah. We are the people who are staying up all night looking at that that load. <laughs> Not you, Ed. Us. I I would I would like to know you know as you know as part of the discussion on multi sites inside a domain of one zone, I'd be interested in knowing what you're looking at. And what I should be aware of, so I know when that load is too big for the shared hosting server. Yeah, I think when you start getting into like, you know, running a WordPress multi-site, like full blown for when you're saying this is open to the community of campus, I think you're going to start getting hits and people are running it. You'll know. I mean, if you're doing a kind of test and it's a pilot and it's a control community. But I really like just because of the way like Noah and John could speak to this, you know, within just a few short months, you have hundreds or thousands of users on it and logging in all at a class. And we've all run into this, even Commons in the Box, who's on shared hosting, ran into this even recently, like yesterday. And shared hosting just has its limits. And even a VPS that's kind of shared hosting with Domain of One's Own that has all these different accounts you'll hit those same limits. But we could talk about that, but that would be just the one caution, uh, danger, danger there. And it, it can be tricky too, because there's not like a number. <laughs> it's not like we can be like, oh, after 150 WordPress users, it, it's not like that because it's very situational. And how is the site used? When is it hit? What type of themes and plugins are installed? What's the size of the database, You know, post tables, all of that stuff. So very often if you know that it's going to be a larger scale thing it it comes down to like okay well it's slow now so it's time to move it <laughs> or okay well we're getting errors every once in a while when loading the page so it's time to move it and so not, not that there there can be other ways too but it's it's extremely situational and it is worth i mean and i don't want to turn this into a to, it is worth just saying that tim clark pointed to the whole sunday night phenomenon like once you have a WordPress multi-site that's now kind of quote unquote enterprise, like people are going to it default and then maybe domain of one's own, there's also a different expectation of uptime and, you know, that. And so when you get to that point, you know, like this is enterprise, we got to put the resources behind it. And that's where the third tier, if it's WordPress multi-site, then domain of one's own, the next bit is a scalable cloud-based infrastructure like Reclaim Cloud. So you have to understand, like Noah and John, as you all are doing stuff like this and the folks out in the community, you're helping us understand what it is we provide to our community. So just as part of this chat, I want to say thank you both for the work you're doing to help us understand what people really need this for and how they're using it. And to see WordPress multi-site get love still, you know, how many years after, you know, it hit the education scene is, is super cool. So anyway... Yeah, thank awesome. you all. Thanks, John and Noah, especially. Um, it was really awesome hearing about the great work you both are doing and your teams you're on are doing.
and and now I think you have people who are going to be calling you. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> but also like just I know there are folks like Trinity, Skidmore, a lot of folks who have Domain of One's Own and WordPress multi-site, and who may. So if you do want to talk with folks or you want to reach out, um, let us know. You know whether John and Noah, if you all like. Our thing, but if you want to run it through us or discuss that, just let us know because it is cool what you've done, and I think people have a lot to learn from it. Yeah, and I wanted to say thanks to Noah for you know making all of your stuff open and uh, and letting us pretty shamelessly you know rip it off and and repackage it. So I appreciate it. All right, so it's there for enjoy. We do like a little credit in the footer if you haven't got one. Um, but now everybody's yeah. very welcome to come and use the box, and if that saves people time and if it's a good place to get started. Please, Steele, we should have um, share and share alike licenses on everything uh, in terms of both the multi-site and the domains of knowledge basis. So do that. That sounds good. If you want more, we've also got teach.coventry.domains, which is our, uh, again, a, a pedagogical best practices for educators. But if there's anything tasty in there, you're welcome to use that as well. Um, so, <laughs> so I'll drop a link. But yeah, definitely, we'd like to keep everything open source where we can. Yeah, thanks for uh, great documentation. Always. All right, I think I'm gonna hit stop on the recording, but um, this is great.